Welcome back to the I Am Winter Solstice Symposium, providing you a virtual gathering space during these midwinter winds. Please warm your hearts at our fire. We have 18 wise women presenting this year, and what makes this gathering special is the group of dedicated fire tenders we have holding space throughout, throughout the entire symposium, throughout the world, and they're keeping a, a sacred place for you to do this work with us. And today's uh, guest is Lisa J.G. Weichel. She's the author of Owl Medicine. She's a writer, shamanic practitioner, and sacred listener. In addition to offering one-on-one -on -one sessions, she also leads listening retreats and other immersive opportunities to bring heightened awareness and connection into our lives. Her evolution has led her from engaging in small town general law practice to women's rights advocacy, to writing a spiritual memoir about her initiation into the value of discernment and light to her present focus on shamanic healing and mentoring in techniques of living life from a shamanic perspective. She is presently writing a sequel to her spiritual memoir, Owl Medicine, and is engaged in what she terms an act of power that involves writing 1,111 consecutive blog posts in devotion of memory to her son, Carl, who died on 11-11-11. You can find her blog, Ruffled Feathers, on her website at Owl Medicine and sign up to have it delivered into your email. Welcome, my good friend and wise owl. There you go. She's under my contacts as Lisa Owl. <laughs> <laughs> Because you have a lot of leases in your life. Well, let's not get into the L's. I have more L's, L's, L's. Um, so um, I guess you're going to share with us today about what? Wow, what? The program is about ritual, right? Yes. This whole I Am Symposium Winter Solstice 2018 is about ritual. And when you invited me to participate, I thought, oh, man. I am just not, uh, I'm not, I, I'm not what I would consider a big ritual person. I, um, I, I just, I kind of leave that to other people. My rituals that I find most profound are really very simple. For instance, even just opening sacred space, which is a ritual in and of itself, but that's about as hugely involved as I get. But then I thought a little bit more and I realized that a small but simple but simple ritual that I've engaged in for pretty much I'd say almost 30 years is choosing medicine cards. And um, when I say medicine cards, I'm specifically meaning medicine cards, mm -hmm. uh, which are by um, Jamie Sams and David Carson. This is the box they come in. Um, and it's funny because here I am hyping somebody else's work, but I also hype your work too. So that's kind of the way I, I roll. But I've been using these cards for, like I say, 30 years. I mean, and even though I've found all sorts of other books and other um, things to work with as far as my daily ritual, those are the things I always come back to. And I think it's because of my connection to birds and animals and, and, and things of that nature. Um, but I am incorporating the wind cards as well. Um, but Carl and I do this, do this ritual. And who's really, Carl? Carl is my husband. <laughs> and um, we pretty much um, make time to, to um, have coffee in the morning and pick a card. And I've described this in my blog and I've written about it a couple of different places. And sometimes I think it's not quite as um, 
clear when I write about it as if I would show you. So I, I just wanted to really quick show everybody what I mean when, so I keep my cards in a pouch like this. And, you know, each one, it, you know, he'll go first and usually, and um, what we do is we blow our intention into the cards. And usually the intention for me is what do I need to know today? Or how can I best be of service? And I used to think it was how can I best be of service, you know, to um, the world or something, you know, something Dios, until I really re realized that in order to truly be of service, we have to be of service to ourselves first. So now I actually literally think, how can I best be of service to myself and then allow that to ripple out into the world? And that's what I blow a question into the cards. And then I shuffle. Um, and Carl and I leave the, the, uh, the deck when, it, when you buy it comes with about five blank cards, which the authors suggest that you either, you know, draw another, uh, some animals that you want in there or whatever, but that's not how I use it. I use the blank cards as um, a means of, for spirit to let me know that I'm not grounded or I'm not fully present or, you know, just to smack me and say, all right, you know, stop talking, get straight and really focus. Because if I pick a blank card, obviously I'm not grounded. So <clears throat> I'll do this and, and then, you know, I just, I just sense when it's time to stop. So say I do this and then I turn it like this and I pick just now I pick Raven which is magic. So hopefully I'll bring a little magic to this talk and people's lives in some way. And underneath is moose. And this is what I mean when I say, when I describe to people, I choose a card. And if anybody saw, I pulled it like right out of the center. Sometimes I'm pulling it out of the center. Sometimes I'm actually pulling the top card. It just depends upon what comes out. But then always on the bottom is what I, when I say I look at the bottom, this is what I mean. So I picked Raven and that was right side up. Luckily, <laughs> not that there are any bad cards, but um, now on the bottom, the moose could have shown up like this and I would not have interpreted it as upside down moose. I would have just said to myself and to Carl, all right, well, moose is underneath. Now, is this, I hope this isn't um, boring. No, this is great. Because <laughs> um, it's, it's not how I would pull the card, so I'm really excited to learn how you've been doing this for 30 years and, and what that has developed in your life. It, and it really has, um, I mean, it's, it's now a family ritual. My sons do it. They, they bring in their partners and, you know, that's kind of like a, a, a threshold test. If they don't run away screaming, then, you know, we know that they're part of the family. <laughs> but so, so let's say, take this for as an example. So I choose the Raven Upright. And then I, I, I go into the book that comes with the cards and I literally read the um, entry for Raven out loud to Carl and myself or whoever I'm, I'm, I'm with. I'm not gonna do that here, but I, I just wanna show you that, you know, it's, it's not an insignificant amount of information. And then they always have um, an interpretation for if the card is reversed or contrary. Um, so I always read it out loud and I swear to you, I read it out loud even though we've been literally doing this for 30 years. Because every time we choose a card, it's a new day. And we're really new people. And we're going to have different experiences in that particular day than we've ever had before. We also have different stuff going on in our life than we've ever had before. So 
it's truly amazing to experience reading the same, same darn thing and, and hearing it with different ears. And that go, coincides with my whole um, passion about listening and how it's so important to pay attention to details and stuff like that. So I'll read, for instance, I would read all of Raven. Can you read us some of Raven since, uh, since you pulled it for the winter solstice? This is probably a group reading for what we are working with this solstice. Yeah, it probably is. It, she always begins, oh, she and he, always be, uh, begin with a little poem on the one side. This one says, Raven, black as pitch, mystical as the moon. Speak to me of magic, I will fly with you soon. Mm. And then uh, the first paragraph says, throughout time, Raven has carried the medicine of magic. This has been true in many cultures across the planet. It is sacred in the medicine ways to honor Raven as the bringer of magic. And it go goes on and talks about um, Native American um, perceptions of Raven. And here's one of my favorite paragraphs of the whole thing. If you have chosen Raven, Magic is in the air. Do not try to figure it out. You cannot. It's the power of the unknown at work, and something special is about to happen. The deeper mystery, however, is how you will respond to the sparkling synchronicity of this alchemical moment. Will you recognize it and use it to further enhance your growth? Can you accept it as a gift from the Great Spirit? Or will you limit the power of the great mystery by explaining it away? That is so integral to the way I think a lot of us live. You know, we tend in our very mind-driven culture to explain things away, to intellectualize the heck out of everything. So, I love, I love bringing magic. I love bringing magic into my life. I love bringing magic into the lives of my clients, my friends. I, I'm, I, I really enjoy that. So, I, I, so there it is that we've chosen magic for the solstice symposium. And underneath is moose. And if anybody is interested in going to my blog, that monumental thing that I've decided to do, which is also a ritual. There I am not doing rituals and now I'm doing a million. But um, when I first started doing my blog of the devotion of 1,111 posts, I kept pulling moose. And moose is, um, that's my dog. Um, moose is self-esteem. And it's all about having uh, I'll read it. Moose is found in the north of the medicine wheel, as is buffalo. North represents the place of wisdom. Self-esteem is the medicine of moose because it represents the power of recognizing that wisdom has been used in a situation and that recognition or a pat on the back is deserved. So I wouldn't read moose but because, I mean, Carl and I have been picking these for a million years. So we have, a, we have an idea of what their basic um, meaning is. So I would say, ooh, Raven, you know, and I'd read Raven, and then I'd know that maybe throughout the day or maybe something I would be doing during the day will, will, will be a, a, an opportunity to be of service in some way because to me, that feels like what moose medicine is. It's, it's wisdom, it's saying the right thing at the right time or in some way being of service. So that's how, I, that's how we do our cards. We, we read the top one and then we let the bottom one inform our work. Um, one other little thing besides uh, the, the blank cards being an indication of not being grounded if a blank card shows up on the bottom, we call it 
um, for example, if it had been a blank card instead of moose, we would have said, oh, I picked raven squared, which means, holy smokes, look out, man, there's going to be big magic in your life. And, you know, so it's just obviously, you know, squared. Um, so that is what we do. That is one um, ritual that we do every day. And for instance, he's traveling today and well for a couple of days and he texted me what he picked this morning so i mean he has his his deck that he his travel deck and we really literally do choose cards every day hmm. and um a lot of times what will another what you might want to call it a ritual which i absolutely guarantee has actually kept our marriage together is we take a walk every day and um, I mean, obviously, not every day since he's traveling, we can't walk together. But when, when we're together, um, we take a walk and oftentimes we'll discuss how our cards ended up playing out in the day. You know, because sometimes we'll think we know and it turns out that it totally took a different turn and we never would have been able to predict how those cards could apply to us in our day and and they do and see there's the magic that uh, i feel this raven is bringing just to this talk because i do feel like our lives are filled with magic and we we just we have to be open to it and you know every day is kind of a surprise so but we will take a walk and we take um a plastic bag from, you know, the grocery store, which will soon be outlawed, but right now we recycle them by walking and picking up trash as we walk every single day. And we've been doing that for years and years and year, 30 years, more than 30 years. And it's just our way of giving back to Mother Earth. It also gives back to the community, obviously, because it makes it look better. But I can truly say that we do it for Mother Earth because it's such a simple thing. It's, and it's so, it, it just makes us feel good to, to clean her up a little every single time because we live near a, a state park and it never ceases to amaze us how people can come out to enjoy nature and then dump their garbage. So like, I think there might be a little disconnect here. Uh, but it inevitably we never want for garbage to pick up, unfortunately. So that's a ritual that we do. Um, those are my main rituals in life. Uh, I'd say I'm probably I. And now I've brought in this this uh, 1111 devotion, which is what I call it, which I really don't want to talk about too much because I've only written 30 blog posts, 30 out of 1,100. <laughs> right? I mean, oh my God. Every moment I, every day that I think about that, I think, what was I thinking? But I know that it was, it was spirit driven because it is not something I would voluntarily do. 30 days that I've, I've actually already done is more than twice the amount of blog posts consecutively that I've ever written in my entire life. So that tells you something. I mean, already I've doubled my output, but you know, it's just a drop in the bucket to what's being called upon for me to do. So all I can do is take it one day at a time and trust that something will come to me that will somehow be of, of value. Uh, you know, even if it's just, hey, she actually wrote two words and posted it. She just kept up another day. Uh, so do you have any questions? First of all, I want to tell everyone to go over to owlmedicine.com and let's cheer her on because the 1111 devotion is, is, is a huge commitment. And you are ritual. I mean, look at you. You've been journaling every day. Even yeah. before the blogging, she journaled every day. That to me is a huge ritual. 
uh, the pulling the cards is very ritualistic partnership between you and somebody else and the walking, you know, which I've taken and called now a wind walk. Right. Uh, so we're, you know, I don't, I'm getting feedback from me. So you're very, there's a lot of ritual going on. And I think people at home could really be appreciative of starting to look and find what those little rituals are that you do every day. You know, what are those things that you just do? And then all of a sudden now we're asking you to look and see, are they, are they rituals that help you grow? And I, I do, you know, the, the walking with my husband and I, and when I say that it saved our marriage, I, I, I'm actually completely serious because it, it helped us in many ways. First of all, it is, we, it's about two miles that we walk every day. So it is a dedicated amount of time that we spend with each other. And there have been many, 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 many walks over the years where we've been completely silent, but just the walking and the thinking and it just gets, it gets stuff moving. A lot, of, a lot of people don't even realize it, but they're kinesthetic and they don't process unless they're moving. Some people like to be still. So it's, you know, I'm more of a still person and Carl's much more kinesthetic. And a lot of times I would be, you know, let's talk about this. Let's do the blah, blah. And he'd be like, no, but we'd take a walk. And it was as though his, his internal mechanisms got oiled and he was able to actually put into words what he was thinking. So that really helped. Um, we've had epic fights on these, on these walks. <laughs> epic. I'm telling you, we have made birds take off from trees. Well, I, I, I have, I'm the one, I'm the yeller, but you know, so I would get frustrated and perhaps yell a little, but it, it also helped ground me. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Well, you know, and it really is that dedicated time to really talking to each other and putting each other front and center. I mean, we've raised three sons and, you know, as the little ones were coming up, we had one every six years, whether we needed it or not, we had already started walking. So when my second and my third were born, they, we threw them in a carriage and walked with them that way. So, you know, they didn't participate in, in talking, but they were walking with us. And it was also part of that it part of the ritual. And I just, I have recommended walking and talking to so many clients because it's incredibly easy to get caught up in, in the busyness of our world and to forget why we fell in love with the person and what our goals are and what, what do we want now? Now that we've been married 10 years, now that we've been married 15 or 20, what do we want to aspire to next? And a lot of times it's easier to dream and to bring the magic into your life when you're walking, when you're talking about medicine cards, which take you out of the TikTok world of, you know, selling or doing whatever people do to earn money, you know, it's, it's, it takes you into a little bit more of a magical realm to recognize our interconnectedness with the animals and the birds and the trees and, and just mother earth. And we need more magic in our lives. That's, I'm sure why Raven showed up in, in this reading, so. And not only did Raven show up, but the moose showed up. And you were talking about the moose of the north. Well, the winter solstice is in the is in the north. It's it's as you head up to the northwest of the north, and right before we make that pivotal turn towards heading back towards the east. And so, I for one, I'm going to pull out my medicine deck and 
read a little bit more about the moose unless you want to just uh, close with a little bit about the moose so we can we can hold that energy of the community the giving the sacrifice the service sure. Well, there are a couple of paragraphs. I don't want to go too long, but the wisdom woven throughout this scenario is that creation constantly brings forth new ideas and further creation. Moose is telling us that joy should be shouted with pride. The wisdom in doing this shouting is that the joy is catching. In a sense, bellowing is a way for all of us to lighten up and give ourselves or each other a well done. Moose medicine people have the ability to know when to use the gentleness of deer and when to activate the stampede of buffalo. They understand the balance between giving orders to get things done and having a willingness to do things themselves. The wisdom of moose medicine is akin to the grandfather warrior who has long since put away his war paint and is now advising the young bucks to cool their blood. If you've chosen the moose card, you have reason to feel good about something you've accomplished on your journey. This may be a habit you've broken, a completion of some sort, an insight on a goal, or a new sense of self that you have fought hard to earn. It's a time of feeling harmonious pride and of recognizing those who aided you in the process. One good exercise in moose medicine is to write down things that you can love about yourself and your progress in life. Then apply these same things to friends, family, coworkers, and life don't forget to share the findings with others. They need the encouragement as much as you do. Mm. So that in particular, those last couple of sentences, when I kept getting moose as I was beginning this 1111 devotion and writing all these blogs, it was such a direct encouragement for me to write things down and to trust and, and believe spirit that somehow people would get encouragement just from me showing up and doing it. So hmm. that's, what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. And if I, if I were listening to myself, I'd say, there is no try, only do. I'd <laughs> it's what I'm doing day by day. It's the commitment she's making to her spiritual and, and sacred spaciousness practices. And this message is coming to you for those of you who celebrate Christmas, the day before Christmas, and, and a lot of families gather for uh, Christmas Eve dinners and Christmas Day you know, events. Maybe this is the year that Raven's calling you to add a little more magic, to add a new ritual to take the family out for a walk or to pull a pull a wind spirit card or a medicine card for for the group for the collective and we do do that on christmas eve and, and christmas day well actually on new year's day especially we pick a card for the year and yeah it's you can do this you can make every day special but especially the holidays and if you are together with your kids your adult children, your, you know, whatever. And if you can share that with them, it's really fun to take a walk on Christmas day and give each other the gift of listening to what, you know, what's coming for them. So yeah. find the magic. Well, I want to really thank you. And I, again, I'm going to encourage everyone to go over to owlmedicine.com and uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be sending you in your e-blast. If you're registered for the IM symposium, you'll get a special gift too. Yep. I haven't quite sure decided what I'm going to provide, but it'll be something fun. <laughs> something magic, maybe. Something magical is coming your way. So stay tuned with us. This is just, we're just a couple days into this I Am Winter Solstice Symposium. If you want to join us in 10 Fire, join us over at the Wind Clan. And, and stay tuned because there's 18 messages and and you might find just a piece of wisdom in each one that you need. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Renee. Thank mm -hmm. you. Always. Thank you for joining us today. And you're welcome to share this gift with your friends. 
Stay with us for the 12 days of the Yule, and if you feel called to go deeper, please join the group of committed fire tenders on the Wind Clan group page wall on Facebook. We look forward to being together with you on this online ceremony to celebrate and bring ritual back to the holy days.